talk by Henrik Johansson. Tell us about your new paper on archive today. Uh, spontaneous broken Einstein Yang male supergravity theory as a double copy. Thank you. Um, yes, first of all, I'd like to join the other speakers and uh, thank uh, the organizers for the opportunity to give a talk. And I'd um, love to be back in Taiwan. So let me just write on the title. Broken uh, Yangless Einstein supergravity as a double copy. So, this is yeah, a new paper today by uh, Gilderoli. Good night. So this is about um, something we've seen already several times today, or sorry, several times this week, and it's about the relationship between gravity and the mills. Schematically, there are some kind of uh, double copy structure, so gravity is some gauge theory times some other gauge theory. And this is maybe more familiar to you is that often people say that ordinary gravity is um, basically a mill squared in some sense, some appropriate sense. Uh, this is not quite correct because if you actually look at the states, there's also more states. So this is actually GR plus a dilaton plus uh, a D mu nu field, which in four dimensions is an axiom. And this is the good old story of KLT. But um, what I'm going to tell you here today is goes beyond KLT. Um, and there's actually a lot of, lot of developments um, which KLT is only a, a small part of today. Um, and this goes into the general double copy stock structure. Um, so today what I'm going to talk about is, uh, first of all, how to couple gravity with Jang Mills. So I'm just gonna denote it as gravity plus Jang Mills. And, and this we worked out last year, um, same authors in last summer, and schematically I can write it again on this format here. So it's this Jang Mills uh, tensor sum, some other theory, which is Jang Mills plus by Q theory. Um, so that's something I'm gonna talk about, but I'm also gonna talk about the generalization, which, which is in this paper today. And that's where we actually spontaneously broke the angle sector of this gravity. So let me just denote that as uh, the angle is broken. And um, that actually has a very similar schematic formula is that you have to consider a broken, spontaneously broken angle theory you have to double copy it with um, another theory, which is Yang Mills uh, plus by cube again. But this time it's not spontaneously broken, but explicitly broken. So only the by cube sector is broken. Uh, you don't want to break both these because then you get uh, massive gravitons. So this is not the theory of massive gravitons. Uh, so this is basically going to be spontaneous. Here's going to be explicit. So 
So, um, so let me start by just doing some saying some quick things about uh, color kinematics therapy. Uh, you already heard about it previously, but let me say some words on it so um, it fits into the context of this talk. Um, Basically, when we compute a scattering amplitude, um, it's convenient to write it on this formula. So on some endpoint, L loop amplitude, um, it's a sum over various diagrams, and we're going to take them all to be cubic graphs. And then we have some integral over loop momenta. We might have some symmetry factor of loop level. Uh, and then we're going to have some numerator factors of the various integrals, diagrams. Uh, there's some color factor if you compute the color rest amplitude, and there's going to be some propagators. It's going to denote as di. Um, so this color factor kinematic numerator. Here, the propagator today I'm going to take it, could be either be a massless or a massive. Certainly, uh, many more theories which are massless are known to have um, this property color kinematics, but there's a certain number of theories which has massive propagators now. Particular, what I'm going to talk today about spontaneous symmetry breaking is, of course, going to have massive properties. Um, and um, so, um, so the new, let, well, let me say something about color factors. So the color factor could be just some products of F, A, B, Cs, for example, and so on. It could also be, if you have fundamental particles, that could also be uh, generators. So it could be or CI it could look something like this. So T A I J and well, I put let me put it in this dumpster as well. Uh, F A B C B C K L etc. So it could look like that. That's the that's the two cases which have previously been considered. Um, today I'm gonna generalize this slightly, but uh, essentially I'm gonna stay within the context of a, of a purely a Jones theory and then break that through the Jones theory. And the numerators, um, they could look something that you have, you have polarization vectors, of course, which could be dotted into each other, and we could be momenta, dotted into polarization vectors, uh, etc. Uh, that could also be, that could also be maybe quarks, Fermions, like this, uh, etc. So all of that could be inside this numerator, and in principle, it could also be non-local, but it, it's not important to today. Uh, of course, this this way of writing it is just com it's just pretty standard way of writing uh, loop amplitudes. The only non-standard aspect is that here I restricted to using only cubic graphs. But that's sort of uh, trivial. Um, if you have a diagram which don't have a cubic form, so for example a contact term, you can't promote it to be cubic. Um, and then you can include uh, a factor S, say, if this is the S channel, you can include a factor S in a numerator and then sort of make, um, make everything manifest cubic at the expense of having inverse propagators in the So, um, so um, then um, let me erase that part because it's new here.
So if you, when I post color to the matrix duality, uh, let me say precisely what I mean by that. So often it's said, well, uh, this is basically going back to the original paper. Basically, we said it's a number of tree term identities which map to the the Cobre identity. But uh, yes, it could be more general. Um, and that's essentially why we call it color kinematics duality. So it could be any kind of color structure. So let me say that here. So the numerators, the numerators, um, so assuming that you have color kinematics duality, then the numerators can be made uh, to satisfy the same general algebraic relations or identities maybe say identities um, as the CEIs that's the common factor and the word general here is important uh, so I mean not accidental identities which might be true for particular case groups but general relations, which are always true. Um, for example, Jacobian identity. Or if you have fundamental protocols, you can have commutation. not considered to be a relation, but rather a definition. Um, uh, but it could be more. Uh, it could be other relations. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you some today, which are needed in the spontaneously broken case. Uh, and you might ask, why, where does it come from? You know, why do we demand such a weird thing? And of course, what we think of is that these NIs, they're really part of some kinematical Lie algebra. know what this kinematical Lie algebra is. Um, and therefore, you know, since we're ignorant about what this algebra is, we do our best. And we just say that the NIs has to behave as color factors because we know the color factors obey relation to, to the fact that they're part of a Lie algebra. Okay, so what's the, um, the double copy then? Um, So if you have found such numerators, and let me call them now n twiddle instead, and if these are dual um, to some color factors, or same color factors as in amplitude up there, um, then, well, this is conjecture, then um, a valid Gravity amplitude is obtained um, if you just let a C go to N in this formula. If you do that, you get something that looks like this. Of course, uh, maybe a bit more schematic here.
And, and this is the double copy. Um, so it's a prescription for getting gravity amplitudes. Um, now you might wonder, you know, why, why does it work? And you can make a simple argument why it, it well, you can give a simple reason why it, it's not incorrect at least. And that this construction guarantees um, gauge invariance. Observed or demonstrated, not necessarily proven because um, um, this is very hard to prove at loop level. Um, but so just give me some, just to give you some example of theories where this has been demonstrated. Um, so um, the first series where this was uh, discussed was uh, n equals um, zero, one. of this above theory, so, but, but it's actually the most well understood case, which is self-dual uh, no theory. So that's the well, most well understood. In this case, the kinematical algebra is actually known. Um, this is worked by O'Connell and Montero. Um, the next example is just the no theory coupled to a higher derivative operator, and this is F2, and this is worked by Lance. Collaborators. Uh, fifth example. So Yang Mills. So instead of deforming Yang Mills with a higher dimensional operator, let's deform it by lower dimensional operator. It's a phi cube theory, phi cube interaction. Um, uh, for those who are interested in phenomenology, QCD has also been demonstrated at three level to have this type of relation. And this is for any number of supersymmetries. Um, 
classic chords. And this was this summer um, for Shiro uh, and me. Um, a, a very peculiar case is that of the Baggers Lambert Gustafsson series. And in that case, it's actually not a Lie algebra, but rather our uh, tree algebra, which is. Um, it doesn't have a three-term Jacobian, it has a four-term Jacobian, I believe. So that's kind of an interesting case. Um, so yesterday we heard of we heard about um, uh, the scattering equations on, and the nonlinear sigma model. So that's also an example. Um, so, this, so yesterday we heard this from um, uh, Ellis and how this is a very interesting theory. Uh, this was actually shown to satisfy color kinematics duality already two years ago, but it wasn't really clear why this was important at the time. Now it's more clear that it was done by Shen and Du. Um, and then the last example, maybe, uh, maybe you consider this to be the most trivial example or the most non-trivial example, depending on your point of view. But here I put heterotic string theory. Um, this is Steve Berger. You might say, well, that's trivial because that's just KLT. Well, it's not. It's, it's actually non-trivial because uh, what Steve Berger and Taylor demonstrated is that the heterotic string actually obeys uh, what's known as the B BCA relations, the field theory BCA relations. So it actually behaves uh, more like a field theory with respect to these BCA relations. It doesn't, it, for example, it does not obey uh, the monotony relations, which are open strings. So and actually, given that this satisfies the BCA relation, you can always invert them and, and recover the numerators at three level. It's a bit bizarre because uh, in that case, you would actually put massless denominators, even though the string has, of course, infinitely many massive modes. Okay. So uh, now let me come to the spontaneous broken case. Um, So, um, so, but spontaneous or broken, so let me now talk about super Yang Mills, um, or Yang Mills, it doesn't matter. But um, what we're doing is taking pure Yang Mills theory and spontaneously to break it. And for that uh, to be true, you have to basically consider uh, the Coulomb branch. So I'm, I'm going to talk about the Coulomb branch. Um, super um, and for that, you need to have either n equals to 0, 2, or 4. And by n equals 0, I mean, um, oh sorry, then I don't mean pure. Then I mean uh, pure n equals plus at least one scalar. But here it's a pure n equals 2, pure n equals 4. Pure n equals 1 doesn't have a Coulomb branch because it doesn't have a scalar. Um, so, in particular, this is that join uh, Higgs field. Um, so, maybe the first observation because it's going to have n equals one with n equals one number. Yes, but then it would be uh, you would have a fundamental Higgs field. So, um, so as far as kin color kinematics duality goes, it's actually it's more or less trivial, and I will come back to what the position marks mean. So it's more or less trivial. It follows from that of uh, super Yang Mills. Um, in one more dimension, p plus one. Um, and of course, trivially, well, of course, color kinematics duality for super Mills itself is not trivial at this level, but given that you have shown that, or given that you obtain some numerators for this theory, it's trivial to then 
go to the continuous broken theory. And this, this is well known that, uh, for example, N equals 4 in the Coulomb branch has essentially the same kind of diagram as higher dimensional uh, supergenimals. This has been used several times in the literature, recent literature, for example, by, by uh, Shihi and, and, and collaborators. So, so, so why that, is that true? Well, it's true because these numerators of continuously broken uh, supergenimals were actually identical to numerators in D plus one. So it just inherits. If this satisfies what is called a kinematic solution, this will also do. Uh, but nonetheless, it's interesting to discuss it because it has some features, and these features we need to import them to um, the other theory that we want to consider on the other side. So let's say something about this case. Um, so let's, for example, consider that we have some breaking of SU N1 plus N2. And this breaks into SUN1 times SUN2 times U1. This is the simplest kind of breaking you can consider. Uh, so it basically confronts that you have to split up the um, adjoint representation into uh, blocks. Um, and this, this block here is basically uh, SUN1 here. Uh, so <coughs> this is just an example. So the rest of the talk is just going to be generic breaking, generic nature, generic breaking. But this is convenient to introduce notation. So we're going to call the generators in this block just the ordinary TA. Uh, and for, uh, just to be complete, let me call the whole um, set of generators TA. Sorry, I want to use lowercase. Uh, lowercase T and also lowercase t here. So let's call this lowercase t but capital index A and here lowercase a. Um, and then same thing here because I'm not going to distinguish between these two blocks. They're going to be the same. This is just the unbroken part of the remaining factorized group. And then off the diagonal pieces, let's call it t alpha because it's a comp basically it's a complex representation, so alpha means a complex index, and then T alpha downstairs. Um, and just because I need, I have too many indices later on, let me also put some hat on these indices. Uh, it's not really necessary, but uh, when I discuss the other theory, they're gonna be unhatted. So, so this is the sort of breaking I imagine having. Um, and, and I need to implement that, for example, on my Lagrangian. And the only place where it's relevant is actually uh, where the structure constant enters, because that's the only color factor in, in the Lagrangian. So, so I need to consider F, A, D, C, and how that, you know, how does that break up into pieces. So it's gonna give me back the ordinary F, A, B, Cs. It's also going to give me something which looks like fundamental representation. It's not fundamental representation, but it <coughs> schematically looks the same way. Uh, uh, and then it's going to be something that looks like um, a Clef Gordon coefficient. So this has three, three complex indices. And that's going to be a complex conic after that, or emission conic. So that, that's the that's the fourth type of uh, structures that I'm going to get, and I wish I had more space uh, to draw. Uh, 